Okay, I'm back to give you guys my top 25 players under 25. This was incredibly hard to do. There's so many good young players in this league, and condensing it to only 25 of them was a very, very hard task. So getting into honorable mentions, people I thought deserved a ton of recognition, but just barely missed out on the cut for me. I'll start off with both of the young guys that I really like from the Spurs and DeJounte Murray and Keldon Johnson. DeJounte, super well-rounded point guard, amazing defender, rebounds, playmakes, and can score. Keldon Johnson, really nice scorer. Uh, who can rebound as well. Michael Porter Jr., I think he has potential to be a great scorer. Uh, the defensive side of the ball is just the thing that holds him back for me. Uh, got Lonzo, who's been having a very, very good season. Uh, just isn't consistent enough yet for me and doesn't really take over enough. Uh, Jalen Brunson, very nice young point guard. Just honestly don't think he's really on the level of these other guys, but I do like his potential, and I think he can be a Goran Dragic type of player in the future. Mitchell Robinson, good defensive center, block shots, uh, gets lobs, and gets rebounds as well. Gary Trent Jr. was super tough for me not to put on the list because I love Gary Trent Jr. He was a lot younger than I expected as well, but he just so barely missed out on the cut for me. And it's not really a, a specific reason or anything. It's just that I prefer the other guys above him. But I also really like Gary Trent. So that was incredibly hard. And then Jonathan Isaac, a uh, guy who's just dealing with injuries. Probably would be on here if he was healthy, but he's not. Uh, number 25, I got Mikhail Bridges, one of the most underrated players in the league. Amazing wing defender, very good shooter as well, and just one of the best role players in the league already. And he's pretty young, so I think he has potential to be like the best role player in the NBA in the future. He's just that good. Uh, so elite as a 3 and D guy, efficient from all places and is a really nice player and number 24 i got tyrese halliburton uh, as a guy who's been great as a rookie so far and uh, he's someone who i really really like just because he's so smart great playmaker is all over the place on defense and he's just a good well-rounded player who anybody would want on their team uh, R.J. Barrett is a guy who I honestly think has gone underrated by a lot of people. Obviously, he was very hyped coming out of Duke, but not many people are talking about the season that he's having just because it's been overshadowed by how good uh, Julius Randle has been. Emmanuel Quickly's had some really good moments, but R.J. Barrett's been pretty consistent this year. He's shooting the ball better. Still not a great shooter, but he's one of the best uh, defensive wings already and especially out of young guys he's a pretty elite defender uh he slashes to the basket very well gets rebounds super strong and he's just a nice young player and i think he's very very good at number 22 i have deandre aiden just based off skill talent and potential he would be a lot higher for me uh, but it's his mindset that holds him back quite a lot i just dislike uh a lot his lack of aggression and uh, lack of just wanting uh, to take over it's something that I believe completely that he can do but he just simply doesn't yet which is incredibly disappointing because he would be much higher for me he's skilled in the post has great touch hits uh, fadeaways he is better on defense than a lot of people expected he rebounds super well uh, but it's just the mindset that holds him back Number 21, I have DeAndre Hunter of the Atlanta Hawks, another super underrated young player who was having a great season before he got injured. He's one of the better 3 and D uh, players in the league uh, in a very similar way to Mikhail Bridges. The thing that puts him above Mikhail Bridges, because they're such similar players, is just his better ability to create his own shot than Mikhail Bridges does have. Uh, so yeah, DeAndre Hunter is a super nice young player, very, very underrated by a lot of people, and when he's going to be healthy, the Hawks will definitely be a lot better. At number 20, I have his teammate, John Collins. John Collins is a very good young power forward who is just a super talented guy, shoots the ball very well, is an incredible finisher who's one of the more athletic players in the league, rebounds, is better on defense, still not great though, he's just probably about average, which is the thing that holds him back from being higher, because it's not like he's an amazing scorer, he's a good scorer, solid enough defender and good rebounder, very good young player, I would just take the other guys above him uh, if I'm building a team. 
Number 19, I have Colin Sexton, who is definitely uh, one of the best bucket getters, honestly, on this entire list. He is a proven scorer in this league already. He's had a phenomenal year for the Cleveland Cavaliers. Future all-star for sure, and I think he could be an all-star before we know it. Honestly, it's crazy to see him this low because he's a guy who's young, talented. Uh, there's just so many good young players in this league. Uh, but he's definitely one of them. Has proved me completely wrong. I thought he was going to be more of just like a six-man type of player uh, and more just around like a 20-point-per-game guy on good efficiency. But he's looking like a 25-point-per-game score. He's a very, very good young player. At number 18, I have Jamal Murray, who has been playing great basketball recently. Uh, he was a guy who was dealing with an elbow injury earlier that definitely hurt him and made him look much worse than he actually was. But ever since he's gotten healthy, he's looked uh, very good. Is an amazing scorer who can uh, score in a flurry. He's a guy who is one of the better shooters in the league. Honestly, I'd want him to just take even more threes than he already does. Uh, but he's a very, very good scorer, and it's already proven that he can have big moments in the playoffs and win at the highest level. At number 17, I have one of my favorite young players in the league, and that's Jaron Jackson Jr. Uh, if he wasn't injured, he'd probably be even higher for me because I love me some Jaron Jackson Jr., now, a lot of players under him you probably think are better than him, but I'm just super high on Jaron as a player, and it mostly comes from just how versatile he is. He's a guy who is a very good defender, definitely needs to figure out how to foul less, but other than that, he's pretty great on that side of the ball, can guard one through five, uh, and is just so versatile, so switchy, and fits the modern NBA so well. One of, if not uh, potentially like a top three big man shooter in the league. He uh, can shoot from way downtown. Uh, other than like Carl Anthony Towns, he might be the second best big man shooter in the league as long as I'm not forgetting anybody. He's that good as a shooter, and he can do it off the dribble as well. He can uh, take take it to the hole. He is just a really nice player who is good at almost everything, except for he's not a very good rebounder at all, and he doesn't really play make. Other than that, though, he's a really nice player, and if he was healthy, he'd probably be higher. Number 16, I have DeMontis Sabonis. He's just this low due to the fact that he is on the older side. Like, he's pretty close to 24. I think he's turning, I mean, he's pretty close to 25. I'm pretty sure he's 20, uh, turning 25 in like a month. Uh, but he is already a proven all-star player in this league, and that's why he's this high in the first place. He is a very, very good player. Uh, a guy who is one of the best post scorers in the league, has phenomenal touch around the basket, has expanded his range this year elite rebounder, great big man playmaker, and he's just a really, really nice player in this league. Uh, I would love him to be better on defense, but he's already so good on offense that he des definitely deserves a lot of recognition on this list. Number 15, I have Shea Gildas Alexander of the Oklahoma City Thunder, a guy who I think is just a already proven player in this league. Definitely an all-star caliber player. Uh, Could have made the cut this year, came just short. Uh, but he's been phenomenal so far this year. Has proven to be a better playmaker than I previously had thought while still being a good scorer, while still being a good defender. And he's a guy who I definitely think the Thunder can build around. And I think Shea Gildas Alexander can be the second best player on a championship team. Very, very good young guard and one of the better ones in the league. Number 14, I have De'Aaron Fox of the Sacramento Kings. Uh, he's definitely in that similar range uh, to Shea Gildas Alexander, but I would just take him mostly uh, due to the fact that I think he is a more proven playmaker, and I think they're both on a similar level as scorers. I would take Shea slightly over him, but I would also take Fox on the defensive side of the ball. Uh, but they're both really good players. Uh, it it's honestly just comes down to personal preference. I just like Darren's ability to push the pace and play in an up-tempo, uh, high-speed style of basketball due to him being one of the fastest players in the league. Would love him to be in another place where he could get more recognition because uh, he definitely deserves it. Very, very good young player, and I love me some De'Aaron Fox. Number 13, I have Brandon Ingram, already a proven bucket getter in this league he's uh, definitely just one of the better scores already my one thing is though is just he doesn't do much outside of scoring he's a good playmaker don't get me wrong but he's not really anything as a rebounder that's special at all he's a below average defender 
Uh, and I would just take a lot of these other guys above him uh, to build around just due to the fact that he's in a weird position because I don't think he's good enough to be like the best player on a championship team. But he also kind of has a play style of a best player on a team. Uh, so it's definitely interesting with Brandon Ingram. Still great young player, uh, but I would just take some other guys over him. Number 12, I have John Morant, who I definitely think is overrated as far as how good he is right now. But I still think his future is super bright. Uh, other than the three-point shot, which he definitely needs to figure out, don't get me wrong, he's everything you'd want in a young guard with him being super athletic, phenomenal vision, one of the better playmakers in the league, finishes at the basket well, great leader too, a uh, guy who's already proven he can win games uh, and he can lead a team at such a young age. Uh, definitely a very, very good young player. I do think he is being overrated by a lot of people, but he's still a guy you could build around, still a guy who I think is going to be great in the future. Uh, number 11, I have Donovan Mitchell. He is a guy who is uh, a bit older uh, compared to a lot of guys on the list, but he is uh, just a proven guy in this league, and that definitely helps his case a lot. As a lot of guys uh, below him you know are good, but you don't know how good they can be. Donovan Mitchell has already proven he can be uh, the best or second best player on a high quality playoff team. He's on a team that has the best record in the NBA right now, and he's leading that team scoring wise at least. He's one of the best scorers in the league, shoots the ball very well, and has had a great season so far. He definitely deserves a ton of recognition as one of the better young players in the league. Again, he is like 24, uh, but he's still young enough to make the cut, and I still think he can get even better than what he is right now. And what he is right now is already a phenomenal player. Number 10, I have Devin Booker of the Phoenix Suns. I have to give him uh, the edge over Donovan Mitchell because I think he is slightly younger than him. And I just think Devin Booker is a slightly better basketball player. Uh, I would definitely take him over Donovan Mitchell as a scorer. They're both amazing scores. Uh, I would take him over uh donovan as a playmaker that's still pretty even and then defense is kind of a wash donovan mitchell is pretty overrated on defense he's fine but he's not a great defender so i just think devin booker is very slightly better than him and i'm pretty sure he's slightly younger than him as well so he definitely deserves uh the recognition one of the best young players in the league and definitely one of the best scorers already so uh he is definitely a top 10 young player in the league for me and he makes the cut Number nine, I have Bam at a bio of the Miami Heat. Uh, one of the more versatile big men we've seen come into the league in a long, long while as a guy who is a very good playmaker, phenomenal defender, rebounds, uh, can shoot the ball from mid-range, potentially can expand his range to the three-point line. Reminds me of kind of a modern-day young Kevin Garnett, which is definitely very, very high praise. Don't think he's ever going to be as good as KG was in his prime because KG was an MVP player. Uh, but they do have that similar play style, and I just think Bam Adebayo is absolutely phenomenal. I think he's going to be a top 10 to 15 player at some point uh, in this league and I think he's already proven he can be around the top 20 range Bam Adebayo is that dude and is definitely a guy I would love to have on my team I think he's the perfect se second option on a championship roster number eight I have Carl Anthony Towns already proven as one of the uh, best scoring big man in the league the best three-point shooting big man of all time my one issue with Carl is though is that he hasn't had much success and it mostly uh, my biggest issue is just on the defensive side of the ball. He's a bad defender, and being uh, good on, on defense at the center position is probably the most important position on that side of the ball, so that's definitely an issue. But he's so good on offense and is so good as a rebounder that I have to still give him high praise and have to put him that high. I would just like to see some more success. I do think with a different team, though, he could be more successful. At number seven, I have Trey Young of the Atlanta Hawks, and he's someone who... I'm probably a little bit lower on than uh, a lot of people just due to the fact that I don't know if a guy who is that bad on defense can be the guy on a championship team. I think a team has to be built so perfectly around Trey Young that I would take other young uh, point guards to build around. You'll see some of the young uh, point guards I have above him because this my criteria mostly for this list is just strictly who would I build around. Obviously, there's other stuff that comes into an, 
uh, to it as well. But it mostly is just who would I build around. And Trey Young, I wouldn't build around him uh, over some of these other young point guards just due to how bad he is on defense. He's obviously an incredible playmaker, honestly underrated as a playmaker. He's so good at playmaking, great score. Uh, but I just don't know what the ceiling of a team with him as the best player is. Trey Young is great, uh, but I definitely have some questions about him and his future, and I do think he's overrated by some people. Number six, I have LaMelo Ball of the Charlotte Hornets. And this may seem a little crazy to put him over Trey Young, but I would build around LaMelo Ball over Trey Young. And it mostly comes from something that you'll see with all the young point guards in the league that I have above Trey, which is spoiler, uh, Lamelo, Ben Simmons, Luka Doncic. It's their size. Size at the point guard position, for me at least, is something I value a ton. Obviously, you don't need to be a huge point guard uh, to be successful. We've seen Steph Curry be one of the 15 greatest players of all time, uh, and he's only 6'3", but Trey Young is like six foot. And he's much smaller than these guys. Lamelo is already a better defender than him in his rookie season. And I think he's going to continue to get better on that side of the ball. He's just as good, if not better, as a playmaker. Uh, he's already proven that he can score the ball very, very well. He's had a phenomenal rookie year. Uh, Trey Young is in his third season. And Trey Young is obviously better right now. But Lamelo Ball isn't like crazy crazy far off of Trey Young. He's definitely significantly worse than him, but he ever since he's been a starter, he's been averaging like 26 and 6. LaMelo Ball is a special special player. He's been much better than most people expected and I would uh definitely take him uh to build around uh 6 when we're talking about young players in the NBA. Number five, I have Ben Simmons of the Philadelphia 76ers, and he's this high strictly due to the defensive side of the ball. Ben Simmons is an elite defender, potentially the best defender in the NBA. Due to his versatility, he can guard every single position at an amazing rate. He's a defensive player of the year candidate. He rebounds the ball incredibly well, is a phenomenal playmaker. Uh, and when he's aggressive, he can still be a very, very good offensive player. Obviously, the shooting holds him back. Uh, but I just think of a team that has shooters around Ben Simmons, kind of like we're seeing this year. And it's very, very successful. It's a super successful formula uh, just due to how well-rounded he is. And even though he isn't the scorer or the shooter that, honestly, most people are on this list, uh, he's so good at everything else that I would still put him as the fifth best player under 25. Ben Simmons is special and is underrated by a lot of people. Number four, I have Jalen Brown of the Boston Celtics, and he's definitely just emerged this year. If we were talking about this uh, a year ago, I would probably put him maybe like 12 or 13, uh, and that's obviously still good, but he has gotten so much better this year that I definitely think he's a top five player under 25, in my opinion. He's uh, the number four player, and it mostly comes from the fact that he's already uh, became one of the best scorers in the league now. Uh, he's averaging about 25 five points this season on phenomenal efficiency and that's uh, alongside Jason Tatum and alongside Kemba Walker which is incredible he's a little overrated as a defender but it's still very good on that side of the ball rebounds well and while I don't think he's a better first option necessarily than some of the guys behind him I say those guys are better as first options but I would take Jalen Brown as a second option over all of them if I want to win a championship because some of the guys that are below him could be better first options, but I think the ceiling of their team is lower. So honestly, I'd rather prefer a guy who I think is the perfect second option to the cha to a championship team, and I think that's what Jalen Brown is. Uh, one of the better scorers in the league, very good defender as well, and an amazing young player. Number three, I have Zion Williamson of the New Orleans Pelicans. I mean, he's already just one of the most dominant young uh, he's honestly just one of the most dominant players in the league as a whole. I was about to say young players, but he's just dominant as a whole. No one can stop Zion Williamson inside. And while he does cl have clear limitations to his game, everybody knows that he is still so good at what he's good at that I would put him at number three as far as young players. He's getting better on defense, still isn't great, but he's an incredible rebounder, incredible finisher on the interior, so strong, play makes pretty well, and I just think uh, if you build a team around him right, 
there's no stopping Zion Williamson. Special player and definitely deserves to be top three in uh, top 25 under 25. Number two, I have Jason Tatum of the Boston Celtics. is already one of the better scorers in the league as a guy who can literally just do everything everything on the offensive side of the ball he's much improved as a playmaker he's got a very good handle can hit off the dribble threes catch and shoot threes can create his own shot in the mid-range finishes on the interior good free throw shooter can get to the line uh rebounds the ball well and is one of the more underrated defenders in the league. Jason Tatum is a very good defender. People, A lot of people think that Jalen Brown is a better defender than Tatum. That's just simply not true. I watch every single Celtics game, and I would know that almost better than anyone. Jason Tatum is a pretty significantly better defender than Brown. He's an all-defense caliber guy. He's a defensive playmaker, gets so many steals in the passing lane, but is also a phenomenal one-on-one -on -one defender. Uh, and it's just everything you'd want out of a young player in this league. He fits the NBA so perfectly because this is the direction it's going into. Long, versatile wings who can score the ball at the highest level but can create for others and are good on the defensive side of the ball. We see with most championship teams, that's what they have. We see that with LeBron. We see that with KD. We see that with Kawhi. Most teams that win championships are led by guys like Jason Tatum and that's why he has to be in my opinion the second best player under 25 and then number one it's Luka Doncic I mean he's a top 10 player in the league already so it's kind of obvious like Luka is one of the best scorers one of the best playmakers one of the best uh, rebounded guards much improved on defense improved as a shooter Luka Doncic is the number one uh, young player in the league that's not even debatable at all uh, he's that dude, and because guys like Giannis are 26, uh, and because some of the guys that you may think are uh, should be on this list, a lot of these guys are actually like 25, so Luka Doncic is just so clearly the best young player in the league, uh, even though I love Tatum, love Brown, love uh, Ben Simmons, LaMelo Ball, no one is even close to uh, Luka Doncic, he is that dude, and he's the number one young player uh, in my top 25, under 25.